Such program is entitled Deeds Can Teach Science, Meet Standards by Studying Pollinators in the Field and the Classroom. That's here in the Ojibwe language, um, which is an, Ash an Anishinaabe language, um, translates roughly to that which comes from the earth. And you can see somebody did a rendition of um, a um, monarch butterfly here. So I am just going to give you a really, really vast flurry of images about this project, which um, we are in our third year of now, our three-year project. So it's been a delight for me. And again, very briefly stated, the project involves having um, kids realize the importance of native plants and the pollinator set that uh, feeds on them and pollinates them. And this whole notion of pollination as an essential, I mean essential ecosystem service is important for people, uh, whether they're young or old, to realize. And I really uh, uh, love the, the uh, photographs that one of you put on there about all the um, the, the image of all the food that comes from this vital service is yes, just outstanding. Um, so that we had um, the Dog Key Project and it, uh, generated a number of activities focused on these essential life processes and um, I think uh, um, uh, an enjoyable manner, primarily a uh, summertime activity and we spent part of the uh, winter in readiness for that. I should also add that if you Google Zodki, um, Greg Peterson, I think, who is on our call, has put out some wonderful YouTube images of some of the high points of the project that will give you a flavor of uh, what we've done more specifically. But you can Google uh, Zodki and, and find those images. You can also go to the Eastern Region uh, website and it's, it's kind of buried in there, but it's under uh, natural resources and then um, my botany subset. So you can find things in there as well about the Zaki project, as well as some other native um, garden things that we're doing in the region. So uh, another piece, in addition to what we have done, which we'll see in a minute, is something kind of new for us. Uh, it's delving into the world of ethnobotany, and it has to do with the establishment this summer of uh, a greenhouse that will um, produce locally native uh, seed transfer zone native plants for outplanting in gardens, for restoration, for rehabilitation. We will uh, do a workshop training for the native plant propagation piece at KBIC. KBIC is the Keweenaw Bay. Uh, Indian community, which is in the western part of the Upper Peninsula along the Great, uh, along Lake Superior shoreline, which, by the way, uh, is situated between the Ottawa and the Hiawatha National Forest. So they would be using these products that are generated here in this garden with the help of youth as well as other, other folks of other age groups in restoring. Um, portions of KBIC, there's some brownfields there, as well as areas beyond that. And then the last piece of the ethno portion of these gardens is to install and to in interpret the gardens at Kiwana Bay and at the two adjoining national forests um, the, uh, on either uh, eastern and western sides of the uh, reservation. So. Um, Employing the language is, is every bit as fun as the other parts of this. It's just really neat. So what I'm going to show you then is just a series of slides that indicate some of the things that are going on. And um, it's just going to be a, a very quick, quick synopsis of this, but the YouTube goes into much more depth. So what you're seeing here are some of our students um, looking at out plantings for restoration purposes of native plants that have been grown. This one in a Forest Service greenhouse, and then of course in the in the future, the tribe will have their own um, greenhouse to begin to develop some of these products as well. This is a restoration uh, readiness for the native plant and pollinator garden 
that, uh, no, no, excuse me, for a restoration of a brownfield area, I think that will receive some outplanting, some of the Zaki students. Um, one of the things that the Zaki youth did um, was visit, as you can see here, a, a local beekeeper. And for many of these students, this is just something that's really new. And I think that all of us have observed, I mean, just an inordinate fear of insects by today's youth. So this is a, a real sea change probably for some of these people, you know, this notion that bees are, are a menace at the very least, and, and more than that, most probably, was a new thing. And you can see actually by their faces, they're, they're pretty amazed by the whole thing. So that was a really cool field trip for them. Um, okay, so they're suiting up here and they're ready to go. Um, the beekeeper was a real good sport. More suiting up and more ready to go. Um, in these series of images, they are um, building mason bee houses. And I know one of our speakers um, talked about um, these uh, mason and orchard bees uh, very briefly. My understanding is that these, these um, types of houses are fairly useful to mason bees. So they spend a lot of time um, from um, soup to nuts on this, from beginning to end, painting them, um, and then handing them out to a uh, selected audience. And, and it, I think it was a really uh, nice learning experience for them, and there's really nothing like hands-on for some of these youth to really get a real feeling for what it is they're doing and, and what it is this means in the greater sense. So um, that was really, really neat. They, um, they made mason bee houses. The uh, photo here shows them in the previous year making butterfly houses, and I've heard mixed reviews on whether they're utilitarian to a lot of the species that we hope would use them. So I, I'm not certain of that. I've heard much more solid reports on the mason bee houses. But in point of fact, that's only part of it. Part of it has to do with the fact that, as you can see from their faces, they're all about it. They're riveted on this. And um, it gives them, I think, a very new appreciation of something that probably wasn't part of um, what uh, what they were thinking about. As an aside, we have some information on the Celebrating Wildflowers website on some of these plants, and I know that there are also a lot of opportunities out there to buy these types of bee houses and to make them using other uh, blueprints. There's a lot of blueprints out on on the web. And the ones on the right side are the ones that uh, students make from the Zadki project of all colors and, and uh, pattern types. Very, very fun. Uh, they learned a lot about pollinator needs, which was, I think, very uh, worthwhile. And they learned it in a very unusual way. Um, you know, it wasn't a sit-down sort of an experience at all. It was kind of... Um, activities that related to this that they could see firsthand in the native plants and some of these other activities that they um, were involved in. So they learned about the needs, they learned about the habitat, they learned about some of the species, and, and so that was very fun. Um, let me see here. I, I think I'm just about finished, which is good because it's just about time for us to wrap up. So. Uh, let me just suffice it by saying um, that uh, kids and pollinators are, are waiting for us, and we have lots of opportunities to continue. Here's the Zadki partners, and uh, you can see in the map there the um, point in Lake Superior at the, tip, at the base of that Keweenaw Bay is, uh, is, is where this pilot project has, uh, has emanated from. And last but not least, here is the website that uh, has a lot of information on it about pollinators, native plants, growing them, 
interpretation, all kinds of things. If you've not seen it yet, go there, and, and there's really some very enriching things for you. So with that, I'll, I'll stop and, and thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Jan, and uh, please a round of applause for uh, Jan and uh, all of our presenters there. And uh, I'd like to uh, recognize the supporting partners of this program as well. As you see, the list is uh, very long, as people have uh, given uh, accolades to them throughout. Yeah, so it is a big group, and uh, it's nice to see more and more uh, organizations coming together and to support some of these very important programs, uh, such as we have uh, seen tonight. I'd like to close by, again, uh, thanking the sponsors of Long Their Lives, the U.S. Forest Service, Partners in Resource Education, which includes all the federal land management agencies, National Environmental Education Foundation, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Prince William Network.